Hello and welcome to this video on the most readily available alternative method of distilling. As a rule, the production of an ethanol distillate such as vodka requires the use of a column still. This is the tried and proven method. The problem for a beginner is that a still, when well made and reliable, can be expensive. A cheap and more affordable still can be dangerous. This means you need to lay down a fairly significant sum of money to get into distilling ethanol. This is true, except you don't, in one specific context, which, while inferior in every respect, is usable. Ethanol can be separated from a solution of water by freezing it. More accurately, the water freezes and the alcohol does not. This is why antifreeze works in your car during cold weather. You may wish to use this method, as good quality stills are expensive, sometimes hard to find, and require some knowledge of how to use them. In exchange for this, you get a refined product, safely and in a much shorter period. If you spend less money, go with a questionable hillbilly still, or buy a broken second-hand still, you are in trouble. They are dangerous, produce an inferior product, and often perform poorly. There is a reason why distilling has a bad reputation, and these products are often very questionable, which can lead to all manner of problems, such as explosions. Ethanol vapor is incredibly volatile, and it is why it is used as a fuel in engines. Freezing works as we can use the fact that it has a lower freezing point than water to separate it. This is a concept that we previously utilized to separate alcohols by weight, density, and vaporization point in a still. Now we are applying the opposite idea. We are using it in a way in which the temperature at which a substance of different weight, density, and freezing point will be able to be removed using these features. Water freezes at around 0 degrees Celsius. Ethanol freezes at negative 114.1 degrees Celsius. And most, if not every last freezer that's domestically available, cannot reach negative 114 degrees. The process for distilling using a freezer is surprisingly simple and straightforward. Begin by putting your, let's say, moonshine into a large bottle preferably something plastic. Plastic will somewhat stretch, whereas glass will shatter. Once your liquid is in this container, do not put a cap on it. Do not seal it in any way, shape or form. The liquids will expand, and as a consequence, if you have closed your container, they will break. Put your container into the freezer. Try and set your freezer to the lowest temperature possible. Once it's in here, wait 24 hours. 24 hours is enough time for all of the fluid in there that's not alcohol to solidify. After 24 hours, you should find that you have a combination of a very large ice block of some description and your alcohol. The next step is simple enough. Turn the bottle upside down and allow the fluid to drain out into another container. You can do this on an open bench, but you need to be aware that you will eventually have the ice block begin to melt. If you don't want to do it that way, the alternative is to leave it in the freezer with the container underneath it so that it drains in there, but the ice remains frozen solid. If you do this with something like, say, a wine, you'll note that the color of the ice block eventually goes away and it should all wind up in your concentrated alcohol solution. This is a big point to be aware of. If you are using a flavoured product, you're going to get somewhere between 24 and 25% alcohol by volume. If you're using this for something like ethanol, you'll get a similar yield, so you're not going to improve it by using a more concentrated form. In fact, it's worth remembering that you can really only get up to somewhere around 35 to 40% alcohol by volume at a maximum using this method. 
you achieve this by taking your 25% solution and repeating the process of freezing it again and extracting it. Now for the contentious point, let's say. Depending on where you are, distilling is illegal, quite possibly, but also defined in different ways. For the purposes of this video, we'll talk about distilling in the American context, but you may need to look into your local laws if this does not apply. In America, it's generally accepted that distilling is a process that involves heating, and that this then separates alcohol using a cooling system. Well, as you would note, the process we've described so far at no point involves heating the solution. In fact, freeze distillation is not explicitly illegal in America, and at least under federal law, any form of distillation is considered illegal, and since this is not technically distilling, we are very curious to see the day that this argument is made before the Supreme Court of the US simply because the distinction is both important and irrelevant depending on what context the discussion is being had. The next point is more important and perhaps feeds back into the definition of distilling. Under normal distillation processes using a still, methanol is the first thing to come off. This is sometimes known as your four shots if you're using a pot still. And with a column still, it's the first 100 or so milliliters that you dispose of. This is because methanol will separate from the rest of the solution at a much lower temperature. Obviously, this is an ideal thing because you can take it away and dispose of it safely, producing a good product. In this particular process, there is no way to effectively remove it from the rest of your solution, and that's a concern. We mentioned at the very beginning that this method produces an inferior product, and this is one of the reasons why. Distillation using a column allows you to effectively and safely remove potentially harmful byproducts. Using freezing distillation, they can remain in your final product. If you were to use this method for something other than ethanol, for example, if you were trying to take cider and turn it into a liquor of some description, the amount of methanol which could possibly be present would be the same total amount but concentrated into a smaller volume. And this is a concern. The entire process is concentrating what is there. That means that you might find that you get a higher dose of undesired byproducts. If you are following good processing methods and you aren't cutting corners, you're unlikely to have these problems to any significant degree. You do, however, need to be aware of the fact that this method has drawbacks, and this is one of the biggest ones we're going to mention. The fact that if you do get undesirable byproducts in there, they will be concentrated and you have no effective way to remove them using this method. It is possible to go back and distill these products if you so wish. That is one way to remove the excess and undesired products, but also be able to work with a much more efficient volume. Take for example if you're producing a large amount of cider, you then wish to concentrate it, you could put your first batch in the freezer. Take it out of the freezer and then put the concentrated alcohol into a still and then distill the concentrate. This process is in a manner of speaking very similar to pot distilling where you go from your initial run where you concentrate it then to an even more concentrated format in the second run but in the second run you're selecting for particular cuts or fractions of your distillate. In short, freezing your spirits is an inferior approach to distilling. It will never reach the 95% alcohol by volume of distilling with a column. You can get closer to the 40% by column distilling. That is 40% or the standard strength of alcohol for something like a spirit. That is, you're distilling in a freezer 
can be, at least by concentration of alcohol, on par with the alcohol volume of commercially available spirits. But you do need to be aware that the quality of what you're making will take a very large hit. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have below.